pilots, Drain Man here, and today I have a very special video. Today we are going to check out this electric soldering iron. This is the SQ001. Is it the TS100 killer or not? All right, let's crack this puppy open. Oh, yes. Guess what it comes with. I'm pretty sure it's just a remake of the TS-100. And we're calling it a TS-100 killer only for the reason that it's cheaper. So if I can get the same thing for a cheaper price, well, why wouldn't I get it? So we've unboxed it. We see that it comes with this thing here, soldering iron holder. I don't know that I'm a fan of that. Uh, I do want to show you what I've come up with, and that's this guy right here. This is my idea of an SQ001 holder. This part here holds your soldering roll, and it, so if you take your solder, you can slide this over it, and you drop that down right there, and then you take your solder and feed it through the hole. And then you've got a little deal right here where you can actually pull your solder out and enjoy it right off the roll. This is a spot where you put one of those little canisters to hold your little copper scrubby. And this right here is where the actual iron is going to sit. And we're going to get into that more. And I'm going to link this file down in the bottom. You can put your pen here. This is uh, really what it's made for is your, your flux pen. So you drop that in there and you've got everything you need in one nice little deal here. The reason why I bought this, see, I have a track power. I've got a very good soldering iron. I love it. I change the tip on it once every couple months and I'm good to go. So why did I need this? Well, I needed this because my soldering iron is not travel friendly. I cannot bring it out to the field. So I'm pretty excited to have it, and I hope that this goes well, and that it's a great iron, and I made a good choice by choosing that one, and we'll see what happens. Now, with this file, which I'm going to link down in the video description, if you get on a Thingiverse and you decide you want to print this out, if you are a 3D printer, and you want to go ahead and print this out, and you want to have this, you're going to notice that it does not come with this. And this is just the little guy right here. I designed this myself. I used Fusion 360, and I modeled it. And then I split it and I measured my distances here. I used a caliper and now this goes on. And now my soldering iron can lay across here. And I know what you're thinking, it gets hot and this is just plastic, isn't gonna melt? No, because I've designed this properly so that way when the iron's sitting here and the, and the tip is sitting here, the hot part isn't till about out here. So for now, let's dive into the iron. What do you get? You get an adapter. You get a, a, a barrel to XT60. You get your iron. You have your actual controller. And then you have your actual soldering tip. This is a chisel tip. So I don't know if this is going to get us into little tight places. It's all going to depend on where the heat actually portrays out of this thing. Okay, so how to assemble the iron. You're done. You like that? No, so the idea here is if I hold it like this, do I want my tip to be like this? You know, where do you want your tip? So you get to angle your tip and the orientation that you want to angle it. And I want to run it just like that. So what I'll do now is I'll take the little screw that it came with. And it's basically just a set screw. And it is a 1.5 mm. And you twist that little set screw in. And no need to over tighten it. Just tighten it down and don't over tighten it. Now she's locked in. So there you go. This iron is built and ready for work. Now for your voltage, this thing can handle up to 24 volts. If you have a 24 volt supply, feel free to use it. If you have a 12 volt supply, feel free to use it because it can handle all of that. But like I said, I did not buy mine to run a, a supply off of. Mine is actually going to be for the field. So I'm going to plug this in, set that there, and I've got a little 4S battery here, and I'm going to plug that in. 
Alright, before we go too far, I do want to show you the startup. And boom. So now it's telling me to press A. So I pressed A, and now it's heating up just like that. Wow, that got to 300 really fast. So what if we want to go higher than 300? Well, you hold down B, and then after you enter the actual temperature, you can go down and you can go up. How high does it go? goes to 400 degrees Celsius. That's pretty sweet right there. Now the next question is, does this eat your battery up? Is this thing gonna eat my battery alive? Is this battery gonna last only five freaking minutes and then it's gonna be dead? I don't know. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find out in this video and you guys are gonna have that answer. All right, so let's check out what voltage we have. All right, so we are at 48% and this thing is pumping 400 degrees Celsius. We're gonna see how much juice is this thing really sucking out of a four cell battery. Is it gonna eat that thing alive or not? So we're gonna leave that there. We'll just throw it to the side. Here's this little holder that it came with. To be honest, I'm not, I'm not too fond of it. But for review purposes, let's, let's get her wet. Oh, I put too much. Whoa, that sponge got big. Look at that. She grew right out of there, huh? So they definitely didn't cut the sponge well. So I'm going to have to recommend that you cut your sponge. I don't know. Does it really sound that hot? I guess it does. So now the moment of truth is here. We are going to use it and we're going to do a little bit of soldering. And we're going to find out how good it is. I'm going to grab my PCB holder. I'm going to bust out this old burnt up Mamba ESE. Alright, let's find out guys. Oh wow. All right, Pod, so we had some fun playing around with the soldering iron. It appears that it gets extremely hot at 400 degrees Celsius. The only complaint I have at this point right here is this thing right here. It actually really sucks bad. The sponge doesn't fit. I mean, I could cut it right here and make it fit. And then let's see. I mean, I guess you would just lay it like that, but... That's not ideal. I don't know. I'm not I'm not happy with it. So this is A and this is B. So if you hold down A and B, you turn it off. Once you're off, you're basically, and they're calling that sleep mode. You're basically in sleep mode. It's safe. It's not going to burn nothing. Right? Then I press A, it comes on. Once it comes on, it's going to immediately start going up to the temperature that I've preset. And I'm going to show you here in a minute how to preset your own temperature that you want to keep. And then what you can do is you can hold down B, release when you see it change, and then you can go up and down in temperature with no problems at all. After you're done, you'll put it back in sleep mode. We've been playing with this for quite a few minutes now. I don't know what it's been, but it's been quite a few minutes. And we have dropped, I think, 10% on our battery. So I would have to go ahead and say it's really not much. I, I don't see any reason why you couldn't easily spend 
45 minutes, 30, 45 minutes with your iron on and ready to go. But you wouldn't do that. You would solder, put it to sleep, solder. And if you're doing a couple things like solder, set it, solder, set it, you know what I mean? Then keep rocking and rolling. But if you're going to solder, set it down, prepare your VTX, do what you got to do, you're going to want to slap it into sleep mode really quick, which is actually a super awesome feature. With you and you can go for a spin. So this thing is actually super freaking awesome. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to head over to the PC. I'm going to show you guys how to pull this up, how to get in the config, how to change a couple things, and how to really get the most out of your SQ001. Let's go. All right, Pilot, so I've pulled up their website. It's called Secure. They make all kinds of cool little stuff, and they are calling this the upgraded version of the TS-100. And I just wanted to show you this on their website under technical parameter. They're showing you that different voltages will get you to the heat up time faster. But my main purpose for bringing you onto the PC was to show you that if you plug it into the PC, there's a little micro USB plug on the soldering iron. And if you plug a USB core with a micro USB into it, this folder pops up. And it says config.txt. And if you click that, it brings up all of the configurations. And here's where you can change temperatures, sleep time. So I was talking to you about sleep earlier during the review. But if you change this sleep time, you can go anywhere between 60 seconds and 99 nine seconds. You'll be able to literally have it go to sleep quicker or longer, depending on how it suits your needs. For me... I wanted to jump into here and change the working temperature to 400 because with that, that means when I start it up, it's going to go straight to 400 and I don't have to start it up and then wait for it to reach temperature and then change that temperature even hotter because I like to solder very, very hot. So I went ahead and changed that. You can change your idle time, your temperature step. You can edit all of that stuff right here. So I'm going to click out on that. Yes, I want to save. Now, if I unplug it, then I can re-plug it in and put it into DFU mode. And you do that by holding down the A button and plugging in the micro USB. And then it'll let you know that it is inside of DFU mode. Once you're in DFU mode, that is where you can flash it with new firmware and do other things that you need to do with the bootloader. Okay, so while you have it plugged into the computer, you can head over to GitHub and you can download the logo converter. And with that, you can design your own logo and you can set that up so when you plug in your SQ001, you'll have your own custom startup logo. Also, this is where you'll get your firmware. So I've captured some footage of me printing my SQ001 holder. It also holds my solder and my flux pen as I showed you earlier. I feel like this is a crucial part of having this soldering iron because without that, you've got to use the really crappy one that they gave you or you've got to lay your iron down on the table and hope that you don't touch nothing you're not supposed to. So this is my review of this soldering iron. I feel like it is a pretty good upgrade as to the TS-100. Also, it's more affordable. I don't know that it'd be worth trying to save any money because it's not much of a difference. But I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one.